पढ़ाया आपने मैं पाकिस्तान नहीं जाऊंगा शादी करनी है तेरे नाल वही साढ़े निके निके बच्चे होंगे बहुत सारे महिंदर परमिंदर जसविंदर धर्मिंदर रजिंदर इंडिया का कोर्ट पाना है ओए हमें नहीं मिलता इंडिया का कोर्ट कमाना पड़ता है मेहनत करनी पड़ती है दौड़ना पड़ता है उसके लिए दौड़ूंगा भी वैसे ही I always believed there were two kinds of men in this world. Men who go to their deaths screaming, and men who go to their deaths in silence. And then I met the third kind. Tell me! How can this be the will of God? Boys no older than 23 fighting the Empire, okay? Welcome to film acting karoge. You guys are perfect. No one is perfect. He has to make a better man. What do you do? Sit on hand and sit on hand. There are two ways to live. एक जो हो रहा है उन्हें दो बर्दाश्त करते जाओ या फिर जिम्मेदारी उठाओ उसे बदलने की लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन प्लीज वेलकम विश मिश्रा Good morning, everyone. Uh, I have been given this uh, impossible task to introduce, you know, a legend that we have had opportunity to bring to Tai Khan stage for the first time in our history. Uh, this man, uh, you saw the clips. It just describes him. One thing that Rakesh Mehra uh, is known for is being so un-Bollywood. While this is a Bollywood film, but it is, it's entirely un-Bollywood. He's the one, you've heard of the expression, born with a silver spoon in his mouth, but he also was born with a silver screen in his mouth, as you can see from his work. Uh, he believes that the quality precedes quantity. 
and he compares filmmaking to a slow cooking. He said, you know, it's like a good food can be prepared with a slow cooking, not with a fast frying or the fast cooking. And this is the character of, of all his films. In 13 years since, since he began producing films, he had made only four films. And he had two actually on the burner right now. They'll be coming out you know, within the next couple of years or so. So without really saying much about this man, it's better just to see the man himself. And he's going to be coming on stage in a second. Interviewing him is our own Sarika Batra. She is the host of a show called Andaj TV. All of you know about her. And this show actually is uh, shown on, on Sony International Network. So Sarika is a, absolutely a risen star amongst us, a, a great media personality. And we have none better than her to introduce her. So with that, let me just call Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra on stage to just tell you more about you know, how he thinks, how he works, how he lives, and what he believes in. So please give a rousing Thai welcome to Rakesh Mehra. Hello. Thank you, Rakesh. Hi. Awesome. Right here. Uh, it's my first time here in San Fran, and uh, it's uh, been lovely. Great weather, great people, absolutely. And uh, what a place to be in. I, I think I'll be coming back here again and again and again. It's, uh, I've been wondering since I... Uh, got down from the plane, why do some places have so much energy? And uh, I'm sure uh, there's no one answer to it. But this place, uh, the air you breathe, uh, does something to you. And it's doing a lot to me. Uh, today is also a very important day because uh, just the elections have been announced, the results of these elections have been announced in India. And uh, it seems like uh, we are back on the road after some roadblocks. Uh, However, uh, we've got to be more cautious and uh, more careful, more responsible uh, this time. And uh, it's an opportunity which has come back. And 850 million people have gone to vote. And they've chosen their representative. It's something fantastic. I was born and uh, brought up in a place uh, called Old Delhi. That's why Delhi 6, that's the pin code for Old Delhi, the walled city of Old Delhi. It's one of the oldest cities in the world. That's 110006. So I ended up making a movie called Delhi 6. Uh, I don't know how many of us have know about Old Delhi. So uh, there's a street called Chani Chowk. So you take a left into Chani Chowk, and uh, on your left is uh, the Gauri Shankar Temple, which is a Shiva temple, uh, next to a bird hospital, a Jain bird hospital. Diagonally opposite, uh, we have a church. Next to the church uh, is a lovely old colonial building of State Bank of India. And then diagonally opposite that is the Shish Ganj Gurdwara. Opposite Shish Ganj Gurdwara, 
Uh, there are also some theaters on the way. Delight, Moti, old, 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 old movie theaters, vintage ones. Opposite Sishkan Gurdwara, there is uh, Haldiram, <laughs> where you get all your uh, uh, the ragdas and the patties and the pani puris and all that. And next to Haldiram is McDonald's. And if you look straight ahead, uh, there is the Fatehpuri Masjid, famous Fatehpuri Masjid. And then you turn around, and you're looking at Red Fort, and you're looking at uh, the tricolor, the Indian national flag out there. So uh, maybe it's like a microsm. It's like when you, if I were to shrink India, it would fit in Old Delhi as such. So um, I grew up there. So I have to tell stories from the place I belong to. I went to a school uh, called Bal Bharti Air Force. And there used to be a MiG-21 fighter plane on the, in the foyer. There still is, uh, like a mock, just the body. We used to play around it. We used to get punished under it. And somewhere, it, deep down, it went into my psyche, into my consciousness. And one wanted to fly the plane, become a fighter pilot. Well, that didn't happen. And many years later, I found myself in the director's chair. So what stories do you tell? MiGs were crashing. Russia had just disintegrated from where we were getting a mix. So the spare parts, we didn't know where to get them from. And there was this huge scam of 2,000 crores, which uh, CAG had unearthed. That made me very angry, because mix were crashing in peacetime. Young pilots were losing their lives. Mothers were losing their sons. So we made a movie called Rang De Basanti around that one idea, uh, around the thought of corruption needs to end. Also, for very long, I went to Sri Ram College in Delhi, and we used to talk about changing the country, changing the world. It was just after the 1977 emergency in India, which uh, kind of dark ages. But none of us, we, we went about getting a job. I went into advertising, getting your first bike, car, your apartment, get married, children, career. And we stayed away from the country. So Rangdeva Vasanti was also somewhere the guilt within me that I did not participate in building my nation. So maybe uh, as a storyteller, it was meant to be, and now it was my turn to tell the story to the younger generation to come out and not be sitting on the fence, but actively take part in the making of the country. And then came Bhag Mil Kabhag, uh, growing in Old Delhi, uh, shifting to Lajpat Nagar in New Delhi, which was a refugee colony when India got uh, when uh, we witnessed the partition of India. We always celebrate uh, 15th August as the Independence Day. For me, uh, it's a very seminal line in the history of our country, because that's when the nation also stood divided. And like anything like this in the history, uh, when there was World War II, there was ghetto violence, and uh, there was apartheid in, in South Africa for 50 years. The ones who suffer most are the women and the children. And uh, Milka Singh was one of them. 
He witnessed the massacre of his parents, his uh, mother, father, three sisters, four brothers, cousins, the village at large. And this young kid, who was 12 years old, uh, with no parents, no roof on his head, uh, no clothes to wear, no food to eat, picked up a knife, joined a gang, didn't even have shoes to wear, and goes out to create a national record in athletics, uh, which stood for 50 years, moves on to break the Asian Games record, a double record out there, two gold medals, moves on to break uh, the Commonwealth Game records in Cardiff, and then the world record and the Olympic record. However, he lost the most uh, important race of his life, which was Rome Olympics. He looked back. And, but, so one interpreted his looking back as looking back at his demons and being haunted by that, by them. All of us are haunted by our demons. Uh, so what's the idea? I was looking for an answer. I was looking for Milka Singh in me and Milka Singh in all of us. So here's a man who did, did not run away from his demons, but ran along with them. And he stood to inspire an entire generation. Uh, let me try and connect the dots. I think uh, what I'm vaguely trying to say and share is I have to tell stories to the world. That's the job, I think, designated to me. That's my destiny. And I, I want to tell stories from the land I come from, uh, not necessarily India, but from the subcontinent. There's some amazing stories to be shared with the world. Uh, I don't want to tell an American idea made in India. I want to tell an Indian idea made in India. However, uh, one has to be a little smarter than that. So we need to, moving forward, we need to uh, be more universal in our storytelling. Uh, there's a huge opportunity out there, if opportunity is the word. But uh, there's this huge craving inside me uh, to, to uh, movies are like ambassadors, they're like cultural ambassadors. And uh, for, for very long, and rightly so, there has been a mindset about the, about the country I come from, not just uh, by the non-diaspora and the diaspora, or the people living in the country, uh, at, uh, with the, also the people living in the country. So one of my mentors, uh, uh, I asked him once, uh, that's Mr. Narayan Murthy, and I asked him, sir, what shall I do and what stories do I tell? Uh, because for me, uh, it's not just a business module, it's a way of life, and the business module follows the passion. And he said, uh, you need to break your own mindset, and everything will fall in place for you. I'm trying to do that, um, and uh, I don't know how successful or unsuccessful, but he did show me the way. Uh, so, uh, here moving forward, uh, uh, I feel very lucky uh, to be passing through a time, uh, this, this phase uh, in India, which is full of opportunity. Um, uh, there are challenges, in, and that's where uh, the game gets interesting. And, uh, but there's so much to do, and, uh, and uh, not do for the sake of doing it, but that's the only way forward. And uh, it's, it's the, the same kind of energy 
uh, I feel now uh, uh, in, in Bombay, in Delhi, in Bangalore, in Chennai, in the small towns and villages, the kind of energy I, I sensed out here. Uh, I look into the eyes and what I see reflected in everyone is is, is, is a dream, I think, is, uh, is uh, wanting to do uh, some, is, is a search somewhere. So we're all searching. Uh, we are all ready. Uh, a lot of us are showing the way. And hopefully, I think, uh, with the Indian film industry, uh, we are able to do justice. Uh, and get a greater share of entertainment in the world today. Uh, right now, we don't even need, uh, move the needle. But the platform is there for us. All the big five studios from Hollywood have now their presence in India. They're even, uh, one of them has even bought into an Indian company. So now the stage in the world is set for us which means essentially distribution, marketing, sales. Uh, all uh, we need to do, and uh, that's the interesting part, is to maybe focus on content, which is innovative, which is interesting, which is uh, path-breaking, which is simple, I think, not very complicated. And there are millions and millions of stories to be told uh, from the land I come from. Stories which go back uh, 10,000 years and how they are relevant today. So uh, I, I just I feel I'm very lucky I'm the blessed one. Uh, on this note, I, I would like to invite Sarika. Uh, Sarika, where are you? inspirational talk, I have to say. Um, here we are at Taikon 2014 with a group of aspiring entrepreneurs, um, people that want to create change in the world, and I'm sure you've moved them. You yourself are creating change through your art. So tell us about some of the grand challenges that you want to see changed in this world. Uh, I wish I knew when. Uh... I, I, I think the greatest challenge is, uh, for me, uh, I can't talk for everyone, uh, is uh, the person I look into the mirror every day in the morning. Mm. He is the biggest obstacle. I, I hope I can do something about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're probably reflecting yourself in some of your films in some sense, right? So we all get inspired in life. There is a moment in our life where we know we want to take this path or that path. And for entrepreneurs and artists, it's usually about creating a huge impact and making change. Do you remember your moment and think back to what that was? Uh, <laughs> there's no one moment uh, as such. Uh, the moments come every day mm -hmm. uh, as such. And uh, I think the journey continues. But I, um, in, in my experience, uh, you know, there's so much of noise around us, and there's so much of clutter. And everybody is telling you what to do and what not to do. Uh, there is a plan, always a plan. But. Uh, I find my moment uh, in trying to shut that off, hear that, and not put it aside, but learn from the noise. But somewhere deep down, uh, go back to your instincts, because uh, uh, you are responsible for your instincts. Yeah. You can't deny your own instincts. You know, that, smallest, that small voice uh, inside somewhere here, 
uh, it's the loudest for me. So those are my moments and um, to stay connected with yourself, I, I think is uh, something which has always uh, uh, shown me the way, yeah. uh, never the result, but it's definitely shown me the way forward. Yeah. So in, in your lifestyle though, there is clutter, there is chaos. I mean, we all have it. Um, with the current political climate is actually for the better. But what do you do to stay connected to yourself? Say that again, sorry, I didn't get What do you do to stay connected to yourself? What do you practice? Do you have like a certain mindset that you follow or a routine? You just sleep well and <laughs> <laughs> sleep early, wake up early. <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> or don't sleep at all. <laughs> Uh, it's, 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 it's wonderful. Uh, there's this uh, constant thing which keeps happening and there are millions of uh, questions and uh, I, I, I wish there was, a, uh, there was a part to it. I wish there was, a, there was yoga or something which just, makes it happen just for Just sleep, you. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, no, I, I believe, uh, uh, I, I, I think sleep is a weapon. It's a wonderful uh, thing because uh, you're born again every morning. Yeah. And, and uh, that's amazing. So I, I, I give sleep a very important thing, however stupid it might sound. Yeah. So Rangdi Basanti actually created change in, in, in India. And now there's a documentary coming out, the real life to the real life. So tell us about that documentary. Uh, it's, it's a seventh year. Uh, anniversary of Rangdi Basanti, and uh, it, the media termed it as a movie that became a moment. So uh, there's a documentary in place uh, which has been made. It's called Rubaru. Mm -hmm. uh, Rubaru means face to face. It was also um, uh, a song in Rangdi Basanti, and it uh, essentially tries to correlate uh, uh, the RDB effect, which they call. So they, um, as to how uh, uh, real life got inspired by real life, mm -hmm. and then real life in turn emulated the real life. So something like that. It should be out next month, I think. Oh, that's fantastic. Looking forward to seeing that. So with the current um, political climate in India, changing as we all feel for the better, it's time for change. How do you feel that's going to affect cinema? Uh, for, for any art form or uh, any business uh, or any work of innovation, expression, mm -hmm. uh, I think stability is very important. And uh, the, I, I, India should now offer stability with this uh, mandate and uh, a lot of us feel uh, and there are a lot of studies as to how uh, entertainment and sports mm -hmm. uh, should go through the roof now. Uh, it's, it's the next five to 10 years, we'll see more and more of that. Yeah. Uh, our experiment with uh, IPL has been highly successful. Uh, uh, movies and documentaries, uh, should now become more uh, like global ambassadors mm -hmm. uh, rather than staying in the pond because there's an ocean out there. And so very exciting times, very exciting very times. Exciting. Yeah. So a lot of the entrepreneurs out here um, are out there to disrupt change. You did that in the film industry with Rangli Basanti and changing from going from Bollywood dancing to actually where the hero and heroine don't dance. Um, that, taking that risk, were you nervous? And what made you do that? You were the first, started a trend. Well, I think uh, if um, I were to take a crude term called profit, mm -hmm. uh, profit can be in figures or it can be like an emotional profit. What you gain, experience is a profit. Even failure is a profit. You learn oh, from. Oh, absolutely. Uh, is, uh, is a result of your ability to take risk, I think. Mm -hmm. So uh, risk is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not bad. 
Yeah. Risk is very good. Hmm. Yeah, that's how that's how change happens in life. Uh, change, Moving forward. whether you accept or not, is happening. Mm -hmm. The only decision I, you need to take is whether I am part of the change or not. Are, are you one of the agents, or you gonna wait change passing by? But change is inevitable. It's bound to happen. It, it happen, happens all the time because that's how it is. Yeah, that's so true. Well, speaking of change, um, what do you feel NRIs here in the U.S. or around the world can do to help India become a better place? What can we collectively do? That's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know the answer. I have, uh, all I can say is uh, uh, wherever you're representing the country mm -hmm. and whichever country you are in, uh, <laughs> try and be part of that country. Uh, uh, be a true citizen of the place you belong to. And that's going to reflect uh, uh, back home. Yeah. And that's going to do good to your families back home, but uh, is, is, is that don't be afraid to uh, to dissolve into cultures. And, and in whichever society we go to, uh, uh, be a player in that society. And, and um, basically, so it's, it's not, uh, we don't have to uh, be stuck to the notion of India as such. Um, it's a wonderful land, actually. We, the concept of India is just 70 years old. Before that, it's, it's uh, and for thousands of years, that's the only place, uh, if I were to see, uh, on planet, which has never gone out and invaded uh, forcefully. Mm -hmm. So we've never sent out our armies ever. Mm -hmm. However, we have always been uh, very happy to uh, share our intellectual wealth, our cultural wealth. And I, I think that's what um, uh, I have learned. I don't know what to do, but that's what I've seen and it seemed to have worked for us. Yeah. yeah. So there's a probably, a, there are, I'm sure, many, many young artists that look up to you and they aspire to be like you and create change through their work. What advice do you have for them? I, I have a secret to share there. <laughs> it's time to share. It's, it's, I'm dying to work with the young guys all the time mm. because there's so much to learn. Mm. So uh, I, I, I think this whole thing about advice um, uh, does not lead you anywhere. I have no advice for anybody. And or what would in, you, a, yeah. in a very selfish way, yeah. I, my next movie I'm working with three youngsters, four youngsters. Yeah. First time they'll be facing the camera. So I'll be learning so much, I can't tell you, because uh, they are the players. Yeah. They are center stage, and they are playing the game. And at best I can do is, uh, I can be a coach or a referee and blow the whistle and say, you're going offside. So um, yeah. at best, yeah. Mm. But uh, there's so much to take from them. And that's the fun. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. So what's next for you? What's coming up? All your fans are waiting for your next big uh, blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know blockbuster or not. Uh, I, um, uh, there, there are a couple of films. Uh, um, I'm doing a film called Mirzia, which goes on the floors in September. Hmm. It's, it's a folklore, uh, which is interpreted in today's time, folklore of Mirza Saiba, hmm. uh, where uh, after doing this trilogy of uh, social subjects, which was Rangde, Delhi 6, and Bhag Milka Bhag, mm -hmm. uh, I want to discover the idea of romance and uh, the whole illogic of why we fall in love, not the logic of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so after Mirzia, uh, we move on to a movie called Raja and the Legend of the Flute, 
it's uh, somewhere in, in modern day times, there's a search for uh, the Vedic mats and the Vedic weapons, mm. uh, which are described in Avedas, and how they can empower or be the tool of construction or destruction in today's world, used or misused. Oh, uh, then there's a movie called CK, translated as Casual Kama Sutra. That's uh, more about, um, it's a human story. It's, it's a love story between uh, a boy from Madhya Pradesh, uh, a cotton farmer's son, and a girl from the US who's in the fashion industry and how they meet. But somewhere it's also about uh, 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 the economic revolution of India, because we, we, we need to have labor in, intensive mm -hmm. Uh, industries uh, and technology should uh, kind of facilitate that. So, because of the population, we, we have uh, human resources, so we need to work around that. So, I, I was a fabricator once. Um, I used to stitch clothes for uh, various labels like Giorgio Armani or uh, uh, you know uh, Levi's and uh, all all the famous labels. We used to had a factory. In, in Delhi, in Govindpuri. After college, that's the first thing I w wanted to do. I wanted to have a business of my own. So uh, I think that will come out of there uh, because there were these workers and tailors mm -hmm. would leave their farmlands and come and stitch. And while uh, they would make uh, two rupees and 75 pesa stitching a shirt and 10 bucks for stitching a pair of jeans, um, on Fifth Avenue, somebody would be wearing it and paying um, $100. So there was a huge gap. So is there a way to kind of uh, uh, shorten, uh, abridge this gap and let the wealth be distributed? Yeah. Then uh, there's a movie called Why Do We Cry? Mm, wow, you have a lot of uh, films. It's uh, about... Uh, we have a syndrome called 98.7 in India, hmm. which is the marks you need to get. Yeah, the, mar the education system is, yeah. I actually wanted to talk to you about that because you're big on education. And I know we're almost out of time, but I have to ask you this question. Um, I, I was shunned out yeah. of my college. Uh, I, I, I went to Sri Ram College as an yeah. alumni and I was speaking. And there the, uh, the list closed at I think 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I said I'm ashamed that I'm from this college. <laughs> so in a good way, yeah. you know, we were having a joke and a laugh. And I, I, I think we're putting uh, ourselves and our kids through a lot of pressure. A lot of, of pressure. Uh, unnecessary. Um, there, there's so much. To grow as a human being, you need to balance it out. So Not just the mark sheet. Yeah. yeah, so how do you feel the education system in India can change to reflect people's talents as opposed to how well they memorize something? Uh, I, I, I think there's a, uh, it's been there. Mm -hmm. um, we, we just need to go back and tap on the past and understand from the Gurukul system mm -hmm. and uh, un un understand when. Uh, we, we need to figure out what was the period when India did its best in the history of that land and see what was going right around that time. And at, take that as a module and adapt it to today's time, yep. uh, innovate it. Yeah. yeah, go back to how we used to do things. Always, I think. Yeah, yeah I agree. Well, one that I, you know, we have to wrap up here. It's been such a pleasure talking with you, but I want you to give our aspiring entrepreneurs and artists out there your last parting words of wisdom, because you're so wise. <laughs> uh, see you today evening. I think you'll have a great time. Oh, <laughs> yeah, have a great time. <laughs> For the six of us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.